Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at covalent bonding. We're going to talk about what a covalent bond actually is, how covalent bonds form, and the use of dot and cross diagrams to show their formation. Before we talk in detail about covalent bonding, there are a few essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. Atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Negatively charged electrons exist in orbitals around a positively charged nucleus. Each orbital around an atom can hold one pair of electrons. There are different shaped orbitals that electrons can be in, depending on their distance from the nucleus in an atom. The orbital shape just refers to the area that an electron pair can be in at any one time. They are essentially constantly moving around within this space. At this level, S and P-shaped orbitals are the ones most commonly studied, although you do need to be aware of the other shapes, especially D orbitals. A pair of negatively charged electrons stay in their orbitals as they are attracted to the positively charged nucleus of the atom, whilst at the same time repelled by other electron orbitals also around the nucleus. This is why the atom doesn't collapse in on itself. Opposite charges attract. A charged particle is high energy and unstable. The closer it gets to an opposite charge, the more stable it becomes. As a result, opposite charges attract and will always try to get as close to each other as possible. The closer they are, the stronger the force of electrostatic attraction and the harder it is to pull them apart. Because of this, the further electrons are from the nucleus of an atom, the higher their energy and the more unstable they become. It is the electrons furthest from the nucleus in an atom that get involved in a reaction and bond in between two atoms. These electrons are called the outermost electrons and make up the surface of an atom. Recap done, let's go. Atoms are more stable when they have a full outer shell of electrons. They can achieve this in one of two ways. They can either lose or gain electrons to form charged ions, leading to ionic bonding. Check the link in the description below for the video that outlines this. Or, and this is the purpose of this video, they can share electrons with other atoms, forming what we call covalent bonds. To show how this sharing can arise, let's take a look at a simple example of hydrogen. A single atom of hydrogen has one electron and one proton. This means it has one electron in its outer shell, in an S-shaped orbital. The electron is attracted to the positively charged nucleus and is free to exist anywhere in this region of space. As for any atomic orbital, the S orbital is able to hold two electrons though, and so at the moment is half filled. Imagine another hydrogen atom also with one electron in its 1s orbital, coming closer to the first hydrogen atom. Because each orbital is half filled and contains only one electron, they can start to overlap, as both orbitals can take another electron. Remember, one orbital can hold a pair of electrons. There will come a point where an electron in one hydrogen atom will be just as attracted to the positive nucleus from the other hydrogen atom as it is to its own nucleus. At the same time, the positively charged nuclei of both hydrogen atoms will be attracted to the increased electron density between them, pulling them inwards and closer together. As this happens, the orbitals from both hydrogen atoms start to merge, creating a new orbital, called a bonding or molecular orbital. Now, both electrons can exist anywhere within this new orbital. Each hydrogen atom also has access to two electrons and as a result, can be considered as having a full outer shell. The positively charged nuclei of both hydrogen atoms get attracted to the electron density in the middle of the orbital, as this is where the electron density is highest, and this keeps the two atoms close together, creating what is called a covalent bond. The nuclei also repel each other, meaning there is a balance between the attraction to the electron density and the repulsion of the other nucleus, and this keeps the two nuclei from getting too close. The distance between the two nuclei is called a bond length. So how can we break this down and what actually is a covalent bond? 
the 1s orbital from one hydrogen atom overlapped with the 1s orbital from another hydrogen atom. Each had one electron in already, creating a new area of electron density between the nuclei of the two hydrogen atoms that has a pair of electrons in. The positively charged nuclei of both hydrogen atoms get attracted to the high electron density in the middle and get pulled closer together and are now said to be bonding. A pair of electrons is shared between the two atoms. This is a covalent bond and is shown in chemistry of a single line between the two atoms. Covalent bonds hold atoms together and are an example of an atomic bond. A covalent bond is formed by the sharing of a pair of electrons between two atoms. That description is normally considered perfectly acceptable at this level, but I would urge you to understand that actually a covalent bond is the attraction of two positively charged nuclei to a shared pair of electrons. To make things easier when showing covalent bonds, we use dot and cross diagrams to show how an electron pair is being shared between two atoms. For example, chlorine is a group 7 element. It has a valency of 7, meaning it has 7 electrons in its outer shell. Remember, it is only the outer electrons of an atom that are of interest in bonding, as the inner electrons are tucked away and inaccessible. We can show these as crosses around the atom. They are drawn in pairs, as remember electrons exist in orbitals, and each orbital can hold one pair of electrons. Just like with hydrogen atoms, two chlorine atoms will share a pair of electrons as their two half-filled orbitals overlap. To make the covalent bond, one electron will come from one chlorine atom and the other electron from another chlorine atom. These electrons are exactly the same. There is no difference at all. To enable us to see where the electrons in the bond have come from, we draw the electrons on the second chlorine atom with dots. This means when we draw the two atoms as bonded together, we can easily see that one electron has come from each of the chlorine atoms. This may not seem important, but some covalent bonds can form where both electrons in the bond have come from one atom. In this situation, simple dot and cross diagrams are incredibly useful to help track how the bonds are being formed. These types of covalent bonds are called coordinate or dative covalent bonds and have been covered in a separate video Check the link in the description below. So, to form a covalent bond, two half-filled atomic orbitals from two atoms have to overlap, creating a new region where both electrons can be, a bonding or molecular orbital. Some atoms have more than one half-filled orbital in their outer shell. Oxygen, for example, has two half-filled orbitals. If two oxygen atoms form a covalent bond, there is still a half-filled orbital left over on each oxygen atom. These two half-filled orbitals can also interact with each other, creating a second covalent bond between the two atoms. This is called a double bond, and the oxygen atoms are now held more tightly than with only a single bond. Due to the shapes and orientations of orbitals, the second bond isn't as strong as the first, single bond, and is more easily broken. This is why a double bond isn't twice as strong as a single bond. Single and double bonds have been covered in more detail in a separate video about sigma and pi bonding. Check the link in the description below. So, to summarise. A covalent bond is formed when two atoms share a pair of electrons. It is an example of an atomic bond. Half-filled atomic orbitals from two different atoms overlap, creating a bonding orbital that a pair of electrons can exist in. Electrons are negatively charged and the positively charged nuclei of both atoms are attracted to the increased electron density in the new bonding orbital. This pulls both atoms together and creates a covalent bond. This is represented with a single line between the two atoms. We can show how electrons are being shared between two atoms using dot and cross diagrams. Dots show electrons from one atom and crosses show electrons from the other atom. Other half-filled atomic orbitals can sometimes also overlap and merge, creating another bonding orbital between the two atoms, leading to a double or even triple bond. As both atoms are now held together by two bonds, they are harder to split apart, although the second bond is weaker than the first single bond. Usually, it is nonmetal atoms that form covalent bonds with other nonmetal atoms, but there are exceptions to this. 
I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.